Well, good morning. I'm going to sort of talk about uh, today sliders. Absolutely love a little bit of slider fishing. Um, look, like say, uh, I, I didn't really do a lot of it till I moved up here. Uh, it was very deep water, sort of a long 10 mile bank, sort of 22 foot maybe. Um, so, your normal sort of conventional wagger ain't really going to work. You can get some real long um, drake wagglers, we can be two foot long and fish those on a, almost like on a Paternoster that some of the anglers do up here. I know Adrian Crane does it uh, from Benick Sports. I've watched him do it, it's absolutely brilliant. I personally get on better with the slider. It's horses for courses. I know uh, one of the guys, uh, big waggler Mike, Mike Atherton, he sort of, uh, I think he sort of developed the method a little bit, so to speak, and he was an absolute wizard at it. But like I say, I absolutely love fishing the slider. As you see there, I've got a selection of sliders to go through. I've got, I always take a box with me, but these are some of the main ones which I use. I've got a Dino Slider Champion Bream there. I can see that, that one's got a, almost like an insert tip. Very, very sensitive. Uh, this is, these are two gram loading. Uh, there's no eye at the bottom, so you just have to use a float adapter. That will go along the line. And when I do set up, I use a bead, which I'll go through in a bit. So I've got a couple of Dino ones there. I've got some more in there. I've got some 10 gram. Also got some 12 gram on the bed. But the bulk of the ones which I use are the perfect range. Um, some of the Daiwa sliders as well. And also I've got some a couple of sliders which I take with me. that come from Benick Sports, which are their own silver light range. Drop one on the floor. So put them over there a minute Jacko, sort them out right, so this is silver light one <clears throat> as you can see it's got some removable discs and it's got a screw brass fitting at the bottom what I tend to do is take out all the discs and just use the fitting on its own as you see there it's got a, almost like a diamond shaped tie there I say this is the silver light range, so that's a three gram loading, and that's six gram of weight on the float. See there, that's got an insert tip which I use there. So this is sort of on the um, shallow waters, around about sort of 16 foot, something like that, 15, 16 foot. I'll still use a slider, but I don't need to use one too heavy. As you can see, that's very, very sensitive, and when the when the final shotting's done, that will sink right down to the tip there. And even the tiniest indication from a small roach in the way we'll be we'll be under. Look say so that's one of the silver light range direct from Benick Sports. Right. Other ones which I like to use. Look say the perfect range. Just just a couple here. This one's had a bit of battering as you can see there, all the paint's coming off. It's probably one of my favourite folks I've used the most. That's um ten gram with three gram of loading. As you can see there, it's got the removable brass base there. I've took all the discs off. Got your eye, which will slide along the line. This is almost like, a, um, I don't know whether it's a peacock or, or a bolter type body. Big long tip. Like I say, I normally shot them down to about there, but if it's windy, I will have a fair amount of the tip showing. This is the more sort of up-to-date perfect one. As you can see, it's a plastic body. Save over the sort of bolstery one there. Same sort of style tips. You can get interchangeable tips, they just come off. So you can have a red or a yellow or a black. Again, you got your base plug. Oh, butt plug. Dear, dear. So you've got your base plug there, your little brass one, as you can see. And that's the bit that you thread onto the line. So that's the perfect one. That's plastic one. I use this a lot more if it's if it's windy. So that's them. Another couple, very very similar to the perfect ones, the dial ones. Again, these have got the removable base. One's got a bit of a diamond sort of eye. The other one's rounded. But they're both the same. That one's an eight gram with three gram of loading. That's ten. Plastic body. Like I say, very, very similar to the Perfect. Got your red and you got a yellow tip on that one. 
this float here I used a lot last year. Um, I think this is a Midland Midland Angling products. It's actually I don't know how you pronounce it. X X in a float, I think it is. So it's a 10 gram in total. It's actually two gram loading, eight gram of weight. Got another one there. The base is off that one because it's already I've got to strip it off. So that's like an eight gram float, two gram loading, six gram. So if you're using sort of half depth, um, if you start getting one or two fish sort of on the bottom, they get a little bit shy. Putting a lighter float on and sort of let fall through the water a little bit slower can get you a few bites. Again, there you got the brass screwing in the bottom. I have to use a float adapter with this one again, but that's not a problem. Like I say, I really like this one in the summer when it's hard going. It's got a fine tip, got the insert, and it's really, really sensitive. So, them are, them are really the floats which I use. And set, how I'll set them up, I'll go through now. So, literally, main line that I'll be using on the rod is £6. And I'll use £6 Dave Harrell, the Pro Match, which is where I like use the pro feeder the pro match is the green spool but I've brought some of the pro feeder in with me because it's a dark darker line and you might be able to see it against the white top so I'll be using six pound on the main line you want a robust line don't flap about with low diameter line sort of robust line like so I use DH mono um, I've used suplex you just want a just a robust line because moving the stop not up and down you don't want something that's going to fray or, or to kink so six pound, I don't go any lighter, perfect. So all I'll do then, when I set it up, I've got my little box of bits, which I use. Take that to the bank with me when I'm fishing the slider. Take that out. Right, so set about some beads. There you go. These are like sea fishing beads, I think. Um, so I thread one of those onto the line first before the float. That way then these have got a real real small hole in, whereas your stop knot would normally probably just pull straight through on that slider. So I'll put a small bead on first, then I'll put the float on. Then once I'm done there, I've got to decide what to do. Now my shot is a little bit different as people have seen. Um, from there, I'll actually tie a loop in the bottom. Only a small sort of overhand loop. Then I'll put in a length of 020 fluorocarbon. Now fluorocarbon has got no memory, you know, it's got no stretch or anything like that. It doesn't kink. It's perfect, I think, for the slider. So I'll put in a metre length. It's just normal loop to loop. Just keep the loop small and just do that together. So I'll quickly show you. So I'd use a Use the fluorocarbon and the bin. So first off what I do there is tie a small loop. I'll do them a little bit bigger today just so you can see. So I'll tie just normal loop in the line. What you've got to remember with fluorocarbon you must always lubricate it because it will fray. There we go, so I just tie a loop in the line. I'll trim that off. There we go. Right, so we'd have the we sort the six pound line. Just before I, I join that on. Now if I'm using a 10 gram float, that's got three gram of loading. So if I'm using a 10 gram float, I will use an 8 gram Olivet. Likewise, if I'm using a 8 gram float with 3 gram loading, I'll use a 6 gram Olivet. So, just for today. So if this was your main line, I'll put it on fat end first. Should have brought me glasses. So I'll put, put it on fat end first. There you go. Then tie a small loop again in the base of there. Let's bring that down a little bit. There. So we just tie a small loop in the base of there. 
<laughs> there we go. So we've got small loop, so it's just as if you're doing normal loop to loop. Right. So just imagine that this is meter length fluorocarbon. So I'll just do a normal loop to loop. So put that through the main line. Just see if you was attaching the hook length back over itself. Just pull it down. Just trim that up on the back. Right, so and the reason I'm going to use that fluorocarbon is I'm now going to push, pull the olive out through in it. So the loop to loop is actually inside the Olivet. You can just see the knot there. So pull it through a little bit more, not much. Right. That then, get my little clippers, I will trim up. Right, so I've done my loop to loop. That Olivet is now on that line. That ain't, that ain't moving. Yeah? So that's on there, that's not moving. And my float, I'll just take that off there. The float, I'm casting off that, off the bulk. So the float itself is going to sit on there, like so. So that's what I'm casting off. Now, this is where it gets a little bit different for me. Because that can wrap over. So what I actually do, I want to form a boom. Now to do that, I use number nine shot or number eight shot. Benefit today, we just use a couple of number eight. Show you what I mean. So I'm going to put that on the fluorocarbon. Definitely should have brought my glasses. Right. So I'm going to start building a boom at the bottom of that fluorocarbon. Now, depending on eights or nines, and actually the type of the float, actually depends on how many you need. So I'll just put a couple on so you can see what I mean. Right. So as you can see there, I'm putting that up and I'm starting to make a boom. So if you can imagine, by the time you've put a few on, like so, you're going to end up with a stiff boom. Now I can put on anywhere between, I don't know, sort of 18, 21, 26 depending if I'm using eights or nines but you think you've got a long boom that will come down to about there that's not going to wrap over it looks a bit uncouth but you will not get any tangles whatsoever I can't take credit for that I was struggling with tangles and the England veterans were having a trial match on the middle level drain and I went over and they were fishing the slider and I was speaking to Steve Saunders and he showed me how to do this. He said, you will not get any tangles. He said, you can punch it out into a headwind. You will not get any tangles. And in fairness, in the time I've been doing it over the last three or four years, I think I've probably only had maybe one or two tangles. If I've had a little wrap over, that's all it is. Quick flick and it's done. So that's how I do mine. So we'll get rid of that. Back over there. Right, so... So that would be the shot and the float. Not to say we've already got the bead on the line, so everything ready to go. All you've got to do is just keep testing the float and testing the float till you got it right. We'll go through the stop, stop knot in a minute. So at the bottom end of that fluorocarbon, I always put 
either a swivel, like a micro match swivel, or the bulk of the time I'm going to be using those Krilusu quick change swivel beads. So I'll put a decent size one of them at the bottom. And just up above that, I sometimes put three number nine shot, depending if fish are taking it on the drop, or I'll put three, but that is where I'm going to be attaching my hook length, so I'll put like three number nine shot. So you've got your bulk will come down, then those three number nine shot are almost like your dropper shot, if you like, and those are the ones that you're going to set the float. Onto the quick chain swivel bead, I always fish a 10 inch hook length with an 09, 010, 011. So that, that's as simple as that. Plumbing up, literally, where I've got the quick change swivel bead at the bottom, when I put the first shot down, I leave about sort of 5, 10 mil above that swivel, and I will clip on, clip on plummet. I'll cast that out to the area I want to fish, and literally, what, what we want is literally, if you just plumb it up as normal, I'm wanting it so my float tip is about there. When the float settles, the float hits against the stop knot, it's about there. I know that I'm then going to be 10 inches, 11 inches over depth. Because the length of my hook length is going to be lay on the bottom. You think I'm going to be introducing probably 10 to 15 big balls of ground bait. I'm going to want to be start fishing on the bottom. So I'm going to lay, lay it on the bottom, hopefully pick up some skimmers, roach and bream. But that's how I start. You can always shallow up and down by moving the stop knot. But this is what I'm going to go through now. So like I say, for the benefit of today, I'm going to try and do it so we can see it. So put that over there. I've got here some eight pound line. It's a little bit thicker, but it's just so we can see it. So I've got some eight pound line there. What I'm actually going to do, I'm going to toy loop in it, and I'll put it around the old door handle. Not fork handles, door handles. Right, so there we go. So what we'll do, we'll stick that around the old door handle. Right, so we've got some line here, so we can play about with this now. So as you can see there, got a bit of line. Go through the stop knot. What I've actually brought with me, some different coloured lines so it stands out. Right, so imagine that's your main line. Now you're going to tie your stop knot. So, double over what you're going to use to tie your stop knot. Now, like I say, if I'm using six pound line, I tend to like to use this Stone River, A, because I can see it, and B, it's quite robust in itself. But I always use probably a similar sort of diameter. So, six pounds like 022, I think it is. So you use 022, you want something that you can move up and down. So, I'm going to lay that on the line, trap that, sort of false loop if you like, between my fingers there. Now just one of the tag ends, I'm going to put that over the two, four times. Two, three, four. That tag end then goes back through the bottom end of that loop, just there. And all you need to do is just gently pull those two tag ends. Nice and gently, bit of moisture. So as you can see there, that knot is slowly coming together. Now, you don't need to pull this tight, just need to nip it gently. So what you've got to remember is you want to slide this, so you don't want it to kink the line. So there you go, that's on there, and as you can see, that's sliding up and down on that line, easy as pie. So just give it a little, little tiny nip, 
make it a bit tighter. There you go. Now to trim this up, you want to leave two inches of tag, so about that much. And the reason you're doing that is because that you want them to fold down on top of each other when they're going through the rod rings. If you leave it too short, so if you leave it say that sort of length, they're not going to be able to fold down through the rings and it's going to catch on the rings as you're casting out. So as you've got there, that's about what two and a half inch, something like that, three inch, they will actually fold as you're casting like that. I tend to put two of these on so when I plumb up both of those stop knots will be together now if I want to alter my depth so if I want to come off the bottom I will move the second stop knot away so probably shallow up say a foot the original stop knot stays where it is because that way I know that is my original depth that's why I always use two stop knots so I can alter my depth and it helps prevent any slippage if the knot sort of comes undone a little bit, which they can do. But that's how I do my stop knot. Keep the tag ends long so they fold through the rod rings. The bead will slide up against that stop knot. That way then, that won't pull through the knot. The float will go up to there, the float will cock, here's the bolt gets down. Then is those number 9 shot just slowly go down the tip if you like, so if that's where your bolt goes, that will slowly go down to where you want it. And that is how I do the slider. Like I say, six pound main line, I don't go any lower. I always use a 14 foot rod. I use a soft action rod if I'm using a light slider. And I use a slightly medium action rod if I'm using a heavier slider. So six pound main line. Don't forget, use two stop knots, use a little bead, that will stop that float going through the stop knot. I use, your, I use the Olivet with that boom of shot to stop it wrapping over. Fluorocarbon, a metre, because it's got no stretch, no memory, stops any tangles, stops any wrap overs. A little swivel at the bottom, plumb up off that, so I've got my 10 inch hook length on the bottom that'll need to be 09, 010, size 16 up, double maggot, double caster, piece of worm, chuck it out, bloke was under, oosh! <laughs>